or a special Jeff Koinange live on location. That's right, throughout the month of December. It's been easy peasy, lemon squeezy, taking it easy, sitting back. That's what I want you to do tonight. Sit back, better yet, maybe even lean forward, because my guest, superstar, extraordinaire, and guess what? He's Kenyan born. Kenyan born American actor Eddie Gadegi is in town. We have the privilege, the honor, to sit down with him one on one. Eddie, good to see you. Nice to see you, brother. Welcome home. Feeling good, yeah. brother Jeff. Feeling good. <laughs> When's the last time you were home? It was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I don't make it back as as often as I would like, but after being back here this trip, yeah. I want to make it a more regular thing. What's it so like being back? It's great. You know, it's you know what one of the best things is in the states when I meet somebody who does know my name, they butcher it. Edai <laughs> Jataji. Nice to meet you. Gatikiji. They throw an R that's not there. Gathurji. Gathurji. Here, people know Eddie Gathegi. Yes. And I find that to be extraordinary. I love it. Edai Gathegi. Edai Gathegi. You know. They used to call me Jeff Coinage. 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 Yeah. Or Carnegie. Carnegie. Yeah, pe people here? Yeah. In, in Over in the States. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You see? You can't yeah. make it up. <laughs> you grew up in Umoja, I born did. and raised in Umoja. I was born in Umoja, lived there for the first three years of my life, and then my father, he went to the States to get a degree. And I think it was one of those things where he was supposed to get a degree and then come back home, but my dad, he has a thirst for knowledge, so he loves to learn. And he ended up getting a second degree, a third degree, and we just stayed. So I grew up in the States, born here, raised there. Wow. Do you, do you have any recollection of Eastlands or your childhood? I came back when I was 16, and that was the first time that I had been back since I left. And uh, it, was, it was weird because I remember people that I hadn't seen my whole life. So there were some memories back there. And I remember uh, being on the lake, the Uhuru Park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember being there. Um, so memories would come flashing back. So I do have some, it's weird what the, what the human mind could do, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So you go to school there mm -hmm. and you want to get a basketball scholarship. You want to be a basketball player. Well, the real story is I was decent in basketball. It wasn't amazing, you know? <laughs> decent. I didn't play yeah. basketball until my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. I was more interested in, in working. <clears throat> I had that, that work instilled in me. So it was about like, you know, uh, making a living when I was in high school. Yeah. And my, my classmates, they, they said that they would never talk to me again if I didn't at least try out for the basketball team and get a letter, because you get little letters mm -hmm. and little jackets mm -hmm. when you join the basketball yeah. team. Yeah. So, so you got to get lettered up and you got to get that silky because the outfit was made out of silk. So you got to get that silk and get lettered up. Otherwise, we're not talking to you. So I tried out for the basketball team and I made it. But I rode the bench the whole year because I had never played junior high. I didn't, right. I didn't climb up with them. So I didn't have any skills. But when I got to college, I practiced every single day. And there was this, I remember there was this three-point shooting competition. And there were some, there were some players that were on the basketball team at the university who were in this three-point competition. And I placed pretty well. And they pulled me to the side and they said, we need a shooting guard on our team at the university, mm -hmm. so you should try out. So I was trying out for the basketball team when I broke my knee. And that's when my life changed. Was that devastating though? Yeah, I never had an injury before, yeah. never broke a bone, never been uh, incapacitated, and, and I just didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I, I went into a deep depression for months and I wanted to take a class that would lift my spirits. So I heard about this thing called acting and I went into this class, and it sort of fed my soul. I knew instantly that this is what I wanted to do. My goodness. Yeah. So if you hadn't busted your knee, you'd have probably played college ball all the way through? And if I hadn't busted my knee, this is the reality as I see it. Yeah. I would have made the team as a red shirt, mm -hmm. rode the bench similar to what I did in my senior year of high school, yeah. not made the NBA, uh, probably gotten interested in other aspects of the sport and maybe become a newscaster or a <laughs> sports doctor or just done something, something in the sport. Or maybe my life would have taken a completely different turn, but yeah. my passion is cooking. So I probably would have ended up finding that because nice. that's really what I would have done if I, if I hadn't found acting is yeah. I'd probably be a chef somewhere. So you're in that acting class. When do you realize, you know, this, 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 I could make a living off of this. Living off of acting? Yes. Ooh, that was a, a long and arduous 
you know, so it's, process. So it's not as easy as people think, you know, you just don't... Well, people think it's easy, they got it twisted. It's definitely not easy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's as hard as anything. Life is hard, you know, you got to... Anything that you do, you got to do it full out or you're not going to be successful. But acting in particular, it's an industry where you're rejected uh, as the norm. You know, you, yeah. you have to uh, run into 99 no's before you get that yes. It's mm -hmm. a constant state of rejection. So you have to build up a tolerance and a resistance. Yeah. And the only way that you're going to be successful is if you get lucky or if you persevere. So acting isn't as easy as people th say. You don't step out of acting school and straight into Hollywood, say. Yeah, no, acting is, is, is quite difficult. It's an it's a arduous road. Uh, and for me, after graduating uh, UC Santa Barbara, I, I looked at television and I looked at movies and I knew that I couldn't do what they were doing. I couldn't perform at that level, so I needed more training. And I applied to the best programs and by the grace of God, I got accepted to one of the best at the time, NYU. And I went through that training program, graduated, but my decision to actually go to NYU uh, came down to finances and, and my belief in myself because it's such an expensive program that if I, paid that money or I took those loans out and I didn't find success as an actor professionally in TV and film specifically, then uh, I, I wouldn't be able to pay back the loans. So for me, it was, do I believe in myself and do I believe in the market forces and do I believe in God enough that I will be a successful actor in television and film? And I took a chance and I said yes to NYU. I took on those loans and I graduated and I started working. And by the way, for those who don't know, um, Tisch School of the Arts, NYU, yeah. uh, the, the alumni include the likes of Spike Lee, Spike Lee, Ma yeah. Martin Scorsese. Yeah. I, I know that because I went to NYU. Yeah, I know, you did. yeah. <laughs> Washington Square, <laughs> right? Man. That's right. <laughs> so, well, okay, so when did the big break come? There's been several big breaks. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll continue to have big breaks if it's a role that uh, challenges me and, and teaches me a little bit more about myself and about the craft. But my first official big break was my first film project. It was a, uh, a meeting with the casting director. It was just supposed to be a meet and greet. She went out of the room, brought audition sides, says, read this, read them, got a phone call two weeks later that I got the job. And that was my first big break. Lost that job because the movie fell apart, but she brought me back in, read for another movie, another, another role, mm. got that job, shot it in Mexico, used that job to move me to Los Angeles. And then from there, I got Crank, which was my first, my second film, but it was my first studio film. Mm -hmm. So that was another big break because it was going to be seen by people. Right. And then I would say Gone Baby Gone. Twilight was big. Twilight was a big one. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a wonderful project to be uh, a, a part of because it just took off. You know, we, we had no idea. And you as a vampire. Me as a vampire. Sexiest role I've ever had. <laughs> It was fun. It was fun. Was it fun? Yeah. yeah. And they made a sequel. They made a sequel, and then they made a sequel to the sequel, and then a sequel to the sequel to the sequel. Wow. And I, I wasn't in all of them. I was in the first two, and then I, I made appearances in, in the, uh, the other ones. Uh, but it's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, yeah. a lot of people saw that film, yeah. and a lot of people love it. And then television series, CSI Miami? I did CSI Miami. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I did CSI, but they wrote my character off before I, I filmed the show. This is the best job I ever had, Jeff. I got hired to play a character in CSI. Right. They wrote the character off and paid me. And you didn't? I never went to work. Hey. Easiest job I ever had. <laughs> and then CSI Miami, they brought you in? And they brought me in for CSI Miami. Right. I did that. Yeah. Yes, that was... Uh, was that fun? It was fun. We shot it, I believe, we didn't shoot in Miami. We shot, we shot in Manhattan Beach, which is not Miami. No. Uh, uh, yeah, and that was a, that was a, a cool job. It was yeah, quick. Yeah. I was in and out. I think I only shot one day. And then my all-time favorite, Blacklist. I Is mean, that your all-time favorite? Yeah, I love Blacklist. Because you know, you know why? Mm. They couldn't kill you. Ha! Ah. They couldn't kill you. Well, they could if they wrote it in, but they didn't. <laughs> yeah. They wrote me onto something else. Clearly somebody yeah. li liked your role. They liked yeah. what you were doing. It was fascinating because we, we got the offer to play the character, and it was supposed to be for three or four episodes. And they said that it's potential to be six or seven. Six or seven came, and they said, can you come back for more? They came back for about 12. And then we asked them if they wanted to make me a series regular and just keep me on the show. Mm -hmm. And they, they didn't see a, a, an avenue for my character to exist on the blacklist long term. So right. they said no. Then I went off, I booked something else. Then we got this mysterious phone call a couple months later saying, we're going to do a spinoff, and we want to bring your character on a spinoff. So that's how that happened. Solomon. 
Miss Solomon. Mr. Solomon. Matthias Solomon. That's it. I've been calling him Matthias Solomon. <laughs> Somebody came to me and said, it's Matthias. Said, How are you going to tell me what my character is? <laughs> I say Matthias. Yeah, Matthias is Matthias. It's my name. It's my name. Yeah. It's Matty. <laughs> Just cut the confusion. It's Matt Solomon. There you go. As a minority <clears> actor, <throat> I mean, you know, and you are, black people are, people of color are. Yeah. Is it difficult getting work in Hollywood? As a black man, it's difficult getting work anywhere. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's equally difficult in Hollywood to get, to get jobs. But people don't really want to talk about that. They don't really want to uh, examine, yeah. you know, culturally how we got to a place where uh, there's just so much discrepancy. Um, but nevertheless, there are opportunities that, they've, that there have never been these days. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in the diaspora rising up. So there's a place. You just have to work hard. And in some cases, twice as hard for half as much. Yeah, yeah, true. And when they hear you're from Kenya yeah. or Kenyan born, yeah. what do they say? You know, <clears throat> I, I guess it's exotic. I guess they, they, they'd like it. You yeah. know, you're yeah. Kenyan. That's cool. But, um, you know, it, 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 it doesn't really come up in, in, in that way. Yeah. You know. Are you often compared to the other Kenyan? L L Lupita. Uh, Lupita. Oh. Yeah. But by who? But in Hollywood, they say, oh, you and Lupita, you come from the same place. Not necessarily. Yeah. No. I'm a fan of hers. Yeah. You know, I'd like to work with her one day. I've met her once before. Have you? Yeah. She's, she's very talented, and I feel like uh, um, I, I do want to go on the record and say there's just plenty of room at the top. Everybody work hard, and there's plenty of room up there. I, there's not really a – I feel like there might be some sort of comparison that's happening right, right now right. In, in the Kenyan community. Yeah. And I want to say that we should celebrate everyone who has the audacity yeah. to endure this very difficult line of work. Yeah. And if you can find success, that should be celebrated in and of itself. When you were at Tish, when you were in uh, acting school, did you ever think you'd end up where you have in your 38 years? I mean, you're only 38. Thanks for putting my age out I'm there, sorry, my bruh. Bad, my bad. My age. I'm 25. <laughs> Rewind the tape. 25. <laughs> no, I'm happy to be 38. I've been yeah. working for a long time in yeah. this industry, and it's. I think everybody goes through this. You, you go, man. This happened really fast, but then at the same time, I'm aware of all the steps that got me to this place. So I'm, I'm, I'm exactly where I, I think I should be. Um, and and w I'm just excited to see what the next chapter is going to bring. Yeah. Who were you looking up to when you started uh, film school, like in, in Hollywood? Who were your mentors? What black man does not look up to Denzel? <laughs> Denzel Washington is the greatest actor of all time, period. There's yeah. a podcast called Denzel Washington is the greatest actor of all time, period. I was on me. it. Is that right? Because I believe it. He's the greatest actor of all time, period. Uh, he was uh, an icon of mine. Uh, Don Cheadle was the first time. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if I've, I've said this too many times, but... Uh, there wasn't a lot, a lot of us yeah. represented on the screen. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, uh, when I saw Don Cheadle on the screen, that opened up my mind. Mm. Oh, there's a place for me, my skin complexion, how I look there. Uh, so he's somebody who I watch very closely and his work is tremendous. So he's, he's been, you know, uh, his, his work has inspired me. Yeah. Um, and now there's a new generation of actors who I'm inspired by. You know, you got um, the Idris Elbas and the, and the Chiwetels and all in the diaspora too. There's lots of actors who just have a tremendous amount of talent and I'm excited to see where their careers go. Do you get to meet with the likes of the Idris and, and Chiwetel and all those? Do you get like in functions and? There's, there's a lot of Hollywood functions. <clears throat> I'm I don't take part in a, a lot of them because yeah. uh, I know that if I'm at a function then I'm not working. And me, I'm obsessed with work. So even if it's on a small scale, I just love to stay busy. Uh, but I have had the benefit of, of meeting a lot of these icons of mine. Um, and you asked about Idris. Idris and I were a part of a small independent film project. We were trying to raise money for it. So we shot a couple scenes. And it was supposed to shoot in Africa, in Kenya, actually. And uh, this was at the beginning of my career. So I met Idris back then. Um, but yeah, it's always cool when you get to meet somebody whose work you really admire and, yeah. and respect. Yeah. Hollywood has had a really rough year the last few months with the Harvey Weinstein controversy. Yeah, yeah. How are you guys reacting to I'm that? I'm not trying to make light of this, but you did pronounce him Weinstein. Is it Weinstein? Coinage. C coinage. Uh, Gathurgy. Uh, Gathurgy. Gathurgy. Did I yeah. do the w it's Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> Weinstein. Yeah. yeah, it's messy. It's yeah. messy. And, um, you know, I think women have just been marginalized mm. and, and, and stepped on for from the beginning. Yeah. So now is a time where people are just waking up to it and, and there's like a, a cleansing going on. And I think, I think what's happening is just the necessary step, you know, of, of stopping some of the horrible behavior that happens behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think 
I think people are going to think twice before they start abusing their power and their privilege. Yeah. So I think that's what's going on. Right it now. had to come to that, I guess, in it some way. It had to come right? to that. It, it had to come to that. And there's yeah. people, and, and there's, 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 there's a conversation about the levels of, you know, this person only did this and right. that person only did this. Right. And I think the point that's being made right now is let's really examine the problem yeah. so we could just, f we could address the problem. Yeah. Is it that tough working in Hollywood? Is it tough working in Hollywood? Yeah, I think it's tough working in Hollywood. <coughs> um, it's, it's tough because if you find, there's, there's failure and success at every turn. So you just have to learn how to navigate that and develop the skin to persevere through that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What drives you back to Kenya? It's home. It's, it's, it's where I was born. It's where my, my mother and my father were raised. Uh, it's where a lot of my extended family, we got a big family, a lot of extended family. I wanted to see them. Yeah. I wanted to breathe the air, yeah. smell it, uh, taste the food, just be present in, in every aspect of coming home. Yeah. What does your extended family think of Eddie uh, Gutharji? <laughs> Gutharni. <laughs> what do they Eddie. think? What do they think of this guy? It's cool. Yeah. It's cool because, you know, I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just working. Yeah. And to come home and to see in the eyes of my relatives, yeah. just the pride, yeah. it's, it's humbling. You know, it's, it's, it's very nice. And I even, I, I mean, I, I was sort of aware of, of uh, the Kenyan community knowing who I am, but to actually come home and see it, uh, it's, it's humbling. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. We, we, some of us follow you on IG and uh, Instagram and Twitter, um, but we have more followers than you, some of us. But uh, I'm going to give you a chance more. now to, to, to give you a handle so the people, sh sh they need to follow you. <laughs> please. They need to follow you. I got to compete with this guy. Can please. You imagine? Please. Can you imagine? I am Eddie Gadeghi. Yeah. I, I am Eddie Gadeghi. On both, right? On yeah. both Twitter and, and Instagram. Instagram. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I am Eddie, Eddie Gadeghi. Gadeghi. One word. Yeah, not Gadeghi. Yeah, there you go. You got it. You got it. <laughs> You man, <laughs> watch out, man. Be careful what you wish for. Uh oh, the followers are gonna be coming. Cause you had a lot. You, you are the man. Uh, no, you the man. You the man. I'm just the man next to the man. I'm the man trying to be the man next to the man sitting <laughs> with the man. I give up. <laughs> okay. The young kids watching you right now, yeah. out there, young Africans, yeah. who want to be you when they grow. I yeah. want to be you when I grow. Ah, but I want to be you when I grow up. I'm too old now. <laughs> what do you tell me? Never too old. That's Seriously? what I learned. You're Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. Sixty-nine years old. Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. I think Morgan Freeman got his big break at forty. You know, and that's and so he defied that rule. But now, it, I mean, it's anything. Yeah. It's anything. If you can dream it, it can happen. Word. Advice for young Africans. I think I'll just go back to uh, if it's in your bones and you feel like you can't do anything else, if, if we're talking about acting, is the mm -hmm. advice for young actors, mm -hmm. then you have never give up. Never give up. If um, I always used to say to myself, the day that I give up, the next day would have been success. Right. So that's the, that's the carrot that I dangled in front of myself. And I think that's why I'm in the position that I'm in right now where I'm a working actor. And that's kind of really all I ever wanted to be was make a living doing what I love, telling stories and embodying hum uh, humans, you know. Yeah. And, and that's where I'm at right now. And it's because I didn't give up. Do you sometimes have to pinch yourself? Like if you walk onto a, an aircraft and everybody knows you or people are pointing at you when you walk down the street do you, do you have to pinch yourself and say, hey, man, it, it, it is me. It, I, you know. I've had a tremendous year this year in terms of the volume of work and the things that I've been able to do. I challenged myself. I just came off of doing an off-Broadway play, which I stepped into with one week's notice, so I challenged myself there. I produced a film uh, that I also starred in, so I got to produce something. And every day this year, I have pinched myself. Every day this year, I've said, wow. I can't believe this is the life that I right, created right. and that I was blessed with. And uh, it's, it's, it's humbling. Yeah. Does it have its pitfalls as well? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm a very private person. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, like I said, I, I sort of came into this just wanting to do the work. Yeah. And then I find that, that once the work is done, then the uh, awareness also comes with it. People now know who you are. And that's something that I will continue to navigate through my entire career, but I also see it as a blessing because those are the people whose lives I'm touching. They, yeah. they feed off of the work that I give them uh, if that's what they're looking for. And I get to you know, share stories with them. What more could Kenyans and Africans, what can they look forward to in uh, Eddie Gadeghi's work? 
I have, uh, I have a couple films that we completed and we're currently trying to get them out there. So we'll see what happens with them. But if, if everything goes well, <laughs> you guys could see Princess of the Row, okay. which is a story of a 12-year-old girl who runs away from her foster family to live with her mentally ill homeless dad, who's a vet from the Iraq war. And uh, I play the homeless father and he suffers from a traumatic brain injury so he doesn't recognize his daughter. Wow. And it's a, it's a love story of the love between the 12 year old girl and the homeless dad. So we finished that up, it's a beautiful film. And, uh, and if everything goes as planned, then you guys can enjoy that film. Nice. Coming back to Kenya, any projects, anything you'd like to, would you want to do something around back here? I would love to do a lot of things here. You know, uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, it's been too long since I've been here the last time. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to get here within, within 24 months. And, uh, and I would love to, I'd love to do a workshop. I'd love to do a workshop with young actors, you know, and, yeah. and, and I'm at that stage where, uh, I feel comfortable with what I've been able to achieve with my acting. So maybe it's time to spread my wings and, and, and learn a new skill. And I've always been interested in scared to death of teaching, but interested in teaching. <laughs> my dad's a teacher and he's wonderful. And I never saw myself that way, but, but I, I have picked up some things and I feel like the things that I picked up, I might be able to pass down yeah. uh, to people who are interested. Speaking of dad and mom, what do they think of what you do? Um, my mom's my biggest fan. You know, she'll call me by my character names <laughs> here and there. She calls you Mr. Solomon? She calls me Mr. Solomon. <laughs> She's, my, the latest one is Lucius Jenkins. You know, nice. he, he's the, the character mm -hmm. I played in the play. Mm -hmm. uh, she is my biggest fan. She quotes lines from things that I've done. Yeah. And my dad, he, uh, he's a beautiful human being. It's because of him that I'm doing this. Because he gave me his blessing, which I didn't think that I would get all those years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has supported me emotionally uh, through the whole journey. Yeah. And it's a tough job, you know. Every actor will know that they want to quit. And, uh, and he has he's always been there on the other side telling me not to quit because this is what I was born to do. Eddie, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, come back and talk a little bit about um, how much Swahili you know, maybe. Fantastic. Sawa, sawa. My, my man, Eddie Gedegi, what a superstar, right here live on a special edition of Jeff Quinange live on location at the Clarence House. Take a break, come back, plenty more. Right here, back in a moment. You're watching JKL brought to 